Hey, how are you doing? Welcome back to Stitchy Bee. I'm Cheryl. Oh, what a few weeks I've had. I'm so sorry I've not seen you for ages and ages. Um, the reason being is my mum's really poorly in hospital and I've spent every spare moment either going up to see her because she lives four hours away from me in Yorkshire and being on the phone and talking to my brother and it's been a really difficult few weeks to try and find any spare time to do anything really. So I've managed to squeeze in a little bit of time this week so I can bring you a video. So the last time we spoke, I made those lovely Christmas stockings and thank you for sending me your versions and some pictures. They came out really well. And um, I mentioned I was gonna do a tutorial for shower caps. Well, I am gonna do that. I think it's a bit of a weird um, video to start the year off, to be honest. So I'm gonna do that in a week or two um, and see where that slots in. So I thought I'd start off January um, talking about frugal sewing and making your existing patterns work for you. Now, um, I'm wearing at the moment another Grainline Linden sweatshirt. Now, I've discovered it's my favourite pattern. I didn't actually realise I've made five of these um, and I thought it's really worthwhile revisiting your favourite tried and tested patterns and finding ways of making them last and making them look different in different fabrics. So I'll show you my five and then I've got a couple of tips that you can apply to your favourite patterns um, to make your patterns last and also I've got a little tutorial on how to insert the perfect jersey neckband and that can apply to any jersey top. So here we go. This one is made in this beautiful ochre and waffle jersey. I've hardly got any of this left I'm afraid so I can't offer you a great deal of it and um, there's only a couple of meters left online. But I tend to sew with a lot of the remnants that you guys leave me um, so it's, it's quite a good way of using up the little bits of ends of roll of fabric. So um, I don't make any changes to this pattern other than my usual arm extension. So I make the sleeves a couple of inches longer than the pattern. And it's I really need to do that because I cannot buy ready to wear patterns, like ready to wear clothes with a long sleeve that fit anymore. I bought a jumper from Marks and Spencers the other day and it's gone straight back because it, it finishes here. So it's a real necessity for me to sew long sleeve tops myself. I can't buy them unless I go to the specialist tool shops and they're not that great and they tend to be expensive. So adapting your favorite pattern in this way is a really good idea. So this is the first, my ochre waffle jersey one. Now the next one I made is this one. Now I call this my crazy cat lady top. Um, and it's actually made from a t-shirt spandex jersey, so 95% cotton, 5% spandex. And it shows that you can really make a pattern work in different fabric weights. Um, this is probably on the lighter side of what's intended for that pattern, but I, I think it's perfect. I'll give you a close-up in a moment, but this is actually a glow-in-the-dark fabric. Um, it's one of the new high-tech fabrics that, that have been out recently. You may have seen this around and um, the, the little eyes light up. You have to kind of charge it like anything that's glow in the dark. You know, I remember when I was a kid and you get those stars that stick on the ceiling. You really have to shine a torch on it or put it next to your lamp or put it in front of something really bright to, to charge it and then switch the lights off. So don't worry about it scaring the kids because it won't. And it survived the wash as well. It's still glow in the dark after that, but it's not mega bright. So disclaimer there. Um, so I had a couple, uh, well this pattern takes um, 1.5 meters so it's brilliant to use up um, small amounts of fabric and also you don't need to make it all in the same fabric so I chose to contrast this with some black spandex jersey because I had a tiny little remnant left of that and with the, the little band as well. So you can mix and match these. And this is very much like, if you've not got the grain line linden pattern, it's very similar to the Tilly and the Buttons um, baseball t-shirt. Um, I, can't, I can't remember the name of that one, but it's her baseball t-shirt in her latest book, Stretch. 
and you can mix and match the colours so you could have a different colour sleeve. It's raglan, it's really easy to sew. So this is one of the reasons why this is my favourite pattern and um, it just comes together really beautifully. Now one of the areas that everybody seems to struggle with is just getting the neckband right and I can tell from my own five versions that I've made that I've got much better at putting in the perfect neckband so keep a look out for that at the end of this video. Oh before I go I promised you a close-up didn't I so you can see the little cat faces so it's not too childlike because it's almost it just looks like a print doesn't it so you can get away with these style of fabrics for yourself even though you might want to buy them to sew pajamas for your kids or your grandkids um, I think it's quite nice, just a little bit of something different. Um, I often find that Bowden make things a little bit like this, don't they? And they call them like the fun skirt and the fun um, whatever the garment is. So do play around with different types of prints. This is my third one. You may have seen this before um, when I did the vlog last year on it. Um, this is made from a, a polyester cotton mixed jersey, which is beautiful. It just feels cottony to me. And this was the first one I made. And this neckline is not perfect. As you can tell, it, it lifts slightly. I think I made the neckband, it's only about a centimetre too long. And that's the kind of difference that it can make to you. And I know lots of people have said they find the neckband a little bit large on this pattern. But really, it's all about how well you put in this piece, I think. And with the tilly and the buttons and baseball tee, that's a slightly higher neck. And which I think I prefer a little bit of skin here otherwise especially if you've got a, a large chest it's a bit more flattering if you've got more neck on show I think but that's just personal preference so this was the first one I made and it's still going strong and I'm wearing it lots at the moment because it's quite chilly have I got hedge hair with all this change in <laughs> I, I, I look like I've been dragged through a hedge backwards, don't I? Bear with. <laughs> okay, this is one of my faves too. You may have remembered this one. Um, now with this, it's made from a reversible fabric. And on the back of this, um, so there's spots on one side and stripes on the other. And that's another idea for contrasting your remnants as well. So you can really make anything go with this as long as it's got enough stretch to to get your arms through and your head through of course I'm much happier with the neckband on this and I started to nail it really after making this one so I'm quite happy I also made the band in the stripe I really should have made the neckband in the the stripe too but sometimes when the stripes are going across that would have looked a bit odd so you have to think as well about the direction of the print that you're adding for these neckbands so really it should go with the stripes working down I think it would work much better and finally uh, this is made from velour which is a stretchy really stretchy jersey and it's quite silky underneath and you would think that it's not comfortable to wear. It is the most comfortable top ever. And I've made, um, I made some leggings to match this and there's, I'll pop the link underneath to where you can see my review on this um, because I've made some leggings to match. And this is a navy. Um, and I can, I kind of wear them for lounge wear. You know when it's freezing cold in the morning and you just want to throw something on that keeps you covered and cozy. This is great which has got me thinking as well about my mum. So my mum's getting through lots of pyjama sets in hospital and I'm bringing stuff home and washing it and then taking more and buying more. And I, it occurred to me this morning, why don't I just make her a load of Lindens? So I'm gonna do that, especially with, it's a, it's a neck wide enough to get off and on for her. So it's nice and easy. And I can also make the sleeves um, to fit her as well. So I think I'll make, the next size up for her and see how she gets on because I've got lots of jersey remnants and t-shirt jersey and I think that'll be quite nice for her. So there you go, that's my five that I made. I also made one for a gift um, for my best friend Alison um, that I've known since school so I'm hoping she's still enjoying hers. So let's go and have a look now about how you can save your favourite pattern uh, into a more usable pattern piece. So a couple of weeks ago, um, when I started making this top, I got my pattern out and I thought it's, it's getting a bit used to this now because it's 
um, taped together <coughs> excuse me from A4 paper it's got sellotape on it often when you're pinning and you're getting to a sellotapey bit it's a bit tough to get your pins through and so on so I thought how can I make a a template from these pattern pieces that's going to be a little bit more durable and easy to work with and um, I bought a little while ago a white tablecloth cover from Asda which is at Walmart here in the UK and I originally bought it just to make my own pattern pieces um, and to start playing around with a few designs uh, rather than dot and cross paper which is quite expensive so I got this pattern, um, this paper out, and I'll show you what it looks like. So here it is. It's two pounds, this, and it's sold in the table cover section, or maybe the party section as well. And um, It's a really tough paper, but it feels like linen, and on the packet it says linen feel um, tablecloth cover. So you can see it's meant to be disposable, but it's meant to be strong enough to do the job. Now it's actually really quite robust, it doesn't tear that easily and you can get pins through it beautifully. So I did a little tutorial on Instagram on how I turned this into my favourite um, linden, transferred the linden pattern onto this and it's been brilliant. It's much easier working with than paper and it's less slippy as well because it's got a slight linen feel it does kind of stick to your um, fabric in in some ways you still need to pin it it's also 180 centimeters wide so you can I think you can get three of your favorite top patterns or maybe two full length patterns out of this so it's quite inexpensive for two pounds and here are the the finished um, pieces and they've been really lovely. So as I mentioned in the clip, um, just remember to mark each pattern piece, especially if you're not that familiar with it. And even if you are, you might not come back to it for another year and it's easy to forget, isn't it? The main points are is to mark the fold line. So if it's to be cut on the fold, don't forget those marks. And number the pattern pieces as well, so that when you refer back to the instructions that are on a PDF or written, then you'll be able to, to work through it easily. I don't need to look at the instructions now for this because I haven't made that many, but um, it's much easier and I keep them clipped together on one of these little shower curtain rings and I hang them over a door where all my favorite patterns um, like to go. I may actually get a clothing rail for here. Now I've got a bit more space, but if you're tight on space, you can always get an over door hook. And I did a little tutorial on that on YouTube uh, last year, which I'll pop a link to um, underneath. So you can re-watch that if you're looking at organizing your things. I think in January, lots of people want to get things a little bit more in order and reuse patterns that they've um, already got or not used yet. And it's an expensive month, December, isn't it? And the last thing you want to do is go out buying loads and loads and loads of new patterns and fabric in jam. So it's been a really nice pattern, this, for me to use up the bits of fabric that I've got ready and left. And also, I needed some easy sewing. I, <laughs> my brain's just been frazzled the last few weeks, as you can imagine. So it's quite comforting to come back to an old friend of a pattern and just know that it's gonna work and it takes about an hour for me now to sew this from having the fabric cut out, so it's nice and easy. And next, here's a little tutorial on how to insert the perfect jersey neckband. So here it is, um, up to this point. So I've assembled it um, properly, I've used my overlocker to sew all the seams, and it was super quick. Because I know this pattern, I'm confident to do that. So all that I need to do next, and finally, is to put the neckband on. Now, I've cut out a piece already. I always cut it longer than the pattern piece, just to give extra to play with. And you can also use this technique for any jersey neckband insertions. It's pretty foolproof, but you just have to do it a few times before you get more confident. Normally, at this point, I'd be saying measure, around the neck line with a flexible tape measure but I've left mine in the sewing room at home so I'm going to use some woven ribbon that won't stretch and then I'll measure that. So I've used the ribbon to go 
all the way round. It's difficult with one hand, but you get the idea. And then I'm going to measure. I've, I've cut it off actually at that length. And then I'm going to measure how long it is. So that measures about 74 centimetres. Now what I need to do is, is to make sure the neck band is about 80% of that total length. That comes to fifth, just over 59 centimetres. So I'll make sure that that neck band measures that length. So I need to cut some off. There we go. So it's 64 at the moment. I'll trim off five cents. If you're working with a really stretchy jersey, not like this, this has got a reasonable amount of stretch, then you would need a little bit of a shorter neckband, maybe 75% of the actual neck size. Next stage is we're gonna sew together the two short ends of the neckband. I've sewn that with my overlocker. Don't forget, you'll need to add on a little bit of seam allowance if you want to trim any off to make sure that the measurement is just over the 59. Um, otherwise, it might not be long enough. The next stage is to fold that band in half and then pin it to the neckline of your jumper. I've measured the exact halfway point at the back of the top so that I can put the seam there. And then it's handy when you're grabbing it in the morning and you know which is the back and it hides the seam at the back for you. The first part of the back pinned. Now, normally at this stage, I'd say work out the quarters of the neckband so you can distribute the neckband evenly but with the linden the back neck is shorter than the front so if you're a bit of a mathematician you could probably calculate where your quarter points should be but i'm just going to have a go and pin it by feel because you can always repin it so there's the neckband pinned and you'll be able to feel if some bits are bunched up like here and this bit has got a lot more fabric so you can redistribute that so I'll do that now. There we go, so that's a lot more evenly spread so that it's not too tight in one area. It's worth taking time over this because it's the most important part of the top it's, and it's the one you'll see. I'm gonna sew this on my overlocker because I've made this top loads and I'm confident enough to do the neck that way. But if you're not and you're not too sure about that neck band, then I recommend that you sew it on a regular machine first. You'll need to remove a few of the pins, of course, to get it underneath your overlocker. Okay, wish me luck, I'm going As in. As you're pinning, just stretch this neckband slightly and then pin. Now when you are sewing along, just stretch it slightly so that it has a snug fit and a smooth line. There you go, looks okay. It's not too tight, it's not floppy. So all that I need to do next is to press that nice and neatly. Not too hard, just a bit of steam on it just to pop it back into place. So I hope that's helped a bit. I know it's not new and exciting in the world of patterns, but I also have put together my make nine list for 2019 and that's on Instagram, but I'll pop an image up here um, and I'll list the patterns that I plan to sew for this year below. I know I still owe you the Sapporo coat review and I'm gonna do that in the next couple of weeks for you. Fingers crossed. Um, and I keep changing the colour of that. So originally I was going to make a black one and then you all bought all the black Melton wool that I had. So I'm going to make it in a different colour. And also my brother's getting married next month. So I'll need an outfit for that. And I plan to wear the coat over the top because February is quite cold here still in the UK. So um, I need to coordinate two of my make nines um, for that. Well. The, the coat is owed from last year, so one of the Make Nine patterns will become my wedding outfit. So I'll share that journey with you as well. Okay, that's it from me this time. Um, I'm sorry I've missed you for so long, um, but I am trying my best to, to take time to do these videos. So I hope to do a lot more this year. And I've got an amazing, huge fabric haul to bring you as well in the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to be busy, so keep an eye out for that. And as usual, I'll explain all the different types of fabric for you. So whether you buy from me or someone else, I hope to try and help you when you're choosing fabrics online, because I know how difficult it is. All right, lovely to see you. You take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.